All right, we're back down here for uh, day four of our finishing. All right, so we're going to talk about um, the proper way to sand uh, four things here. And two of them are almost identical. And they are the uh, taper joint, your uh, butt joints, your inside corners, and your, and your screws that you, uh, that you patch. So uh, I'm just going to let Tom talk about each one of those. We're not going to be running the camera for the whole sanding project, obviously. But, uh, you know, what do you, got to, what do you got to say about sanding, Tom? When you're, when you're sanding, if you've got a nice sanding sponge, fine grit, because if you put it on right, all you need is fine. That paper's coming 220, 150. We're using 220, the fine sanding sponge we're using the fine. When you're going through uh, doing your sanding work, go by feel. Go by what you can see and go by what you can feel. All right? Uh, I'm going to go across here. I'm hitting these. I'm like barely giving this any pressure. Done. Because we put it on right. Uh, it almost looks like pain. That's done. I, I call it go by Helen, Helen Keller style. Go by what you feel. You can almost see it with your eyes closed. Uh, when, as you're sanding your nail holes, don't neglect to hit the entire wall. Because like right here there's a little burr. Right here there's a blotch for some reason. Uh, so I mean, touch the whole wall with your sand, with your sanding block. On these right here, the important thing you want to do is you want to bring the, the end, the end, the edges to make it look like a cloud, uh, like a dusty cloud. So I'm just rubbing. See that cloud effect where it all blurs together? That's done. Barely touching the center because it fills itself. Done. Going over here, I'm just turning the edge. That's mainly what I'm saying is the edge. So when you rub your hand on it, you don't feel anything anymore. No, nope, no. Nope. That's all I'm doing is going by feel. I know I got this little line here in the center. I'm going to go down and hit my nail hole. This one's a little thicker than the normal. Get those edges looking like a cloud that's done. Okay, there I knocked off some burrs on the old drywall. Uh, you know, from where you drop mud. Like that line right there, that's a thick line. Uh, just make sure you hit the entire wall. Okay. Very, very light pressure. Now the Turn one, your head into a cloud. The one thing that you want to be conscious of, too, is you don't want to sand it all off. No, you, that's what I'm saying. You just want to sand off absolutely what you have to, and that's it. And that's it. Or you'll be or you'll be putting mud back on again. So just get your edges real good. That's the big thing, Tom, I guess. The the edges of yeah, the joints. Where, where we feathered it out into. Now here I can feel I got one line in the center. Uh, this is the this is the first of our mud joints. Alright, hit that edge at the bottom, we have a little build up mud, you can come back and get that with funny right? But as soon as I got my edge looking like a cloud, I'm just gonna come in here in a circular motion. You know, I'm getting rid of that line. My line's gone. Circular motion over the whole thing. I'm gonna give it a feel. Feels fantastic. All right, Except so that's right so here I feel a little line. Okay. So I'm going by feel. And this edge still needs to there. I can feel that. Circular motion is best. Yeah, if, you, if you're rubbing you know. one direction back and forth, you'll leave raking marks in the mud, so. Yeah, but that butt joint's done. Yeah. Now I'm just working myself across the wall. Like I said, don't hit the whole wall. Yeah, get that edge to look like a cloud. Once you got that edge looking like a cloud, you can feel it's done. Here I can feel a line in the center. I feel a line over here. So it's gonna ever so lightly get rid of a few lines. The line in the center, here I go. Big circular motion, so I feel it's gone. Okay, constantly be feeling behind your sanding block or your sandpaper, your pole, whatever. Your hand will tell you if it's done. All right, you want it to be as line, smooth dude. as the yep. drywall. These are going out and then back in and cover that tape joint. You want to leave it. You see, I mean, uh, I can ever so slightly feel that it's going out and in, but, it's, but you're never going to see that. Uh, right. You know, because how we put joint compound. Right. You way. can't sand off your butt joints to feel flat because there is a bubble under there. Remember, we hit it with 24 inches of mud. So what the worst thing you can do is try to keep sanding down your butt joints in the center to get rid of that little egg in the middle 
but you're gonna feel ever so slightly and do what's called burn your tape. And that's when you expose your drywall tape and, and you've sanded so much mud off that you've exposed the tape again. Uh, you're gonna have to go back at that point and put mud back on again and uh, it's gonna cost you another day of sanding. So, yeah, but if you get all your, uh, your edges looking like a cloud and make sure you hit the entire wall when you're sanding. Uh, just as far as there's any burrs, any places where you drop mud. Uh, it all comes out when you put the primer on. Uh, you'll see if you have any imperfections. But if you use a good primer, it'll even hide some of your imperfections, if there is any. A lot of times, uh, you don't put the primer on the drywall, and you actually see a dent in the drywall that came from the factory that we didn't even see. So the, the truth of your sanding and your drywall work comes out of the primer. A corner is a little bit, uh, is a, it's basically the same thing. Here I got a bunch of burrs and imperfections here. When I do the corner, I'm going to start out here. I'm going to get that edge to look like a cloud. Once I get the edge looking like a cloud, there we go. There's that cloud effect where you know, you, where you know it's smooth. Now I'm just going to barely come in here up and down, up and down, and strike the corner so it looks square. That side is done. Just show my feel. You can feel the how many lines or ridges. This side of the sponge is actually hitting this side of the corner. So be careful that you don't burn out the tape in your corner. Right. Once again, up and down, go by what it feels like. That's done. Oh, get my edge into a cloud right here. There's my cloud edge. I'm just gonna barely go in these corners. Now, what side of the sponge are you using? They're using the square side. I'm using that, yeah, either side. You can use either side. They're okay. both fine. Okay. Uh, and this gets you right into the corners if need be, like for around stair work, to really, uh, really take your time. Like at the very, very tops, you know what I mean, where it's a little wet. Uh, but basically, what I'm saying is go by the, go by the feel of it. Uh, as soon as you know you got it feeling like a corner and there's no rough birds here with all kinds of ugly ridges, pock marks. Yeah, there's a bunch of stuff sticking yeah, on the wall. I'm just saying, go by and hit the entire wall. But, but go by the field. Alright, so uh, nothing major here of, uh, you know, no brain power being used here at all. It's just basically feel, touchy-feely. Make sure you don't feel any rough edges on your on your uh, joints and your nails and, and your screws. Your don't take off more than you have to. Just stop as soon as it feels good. As soon as it feels good, stop sanding. The paint and the primer will cover the rest, all right? Yeah, but actually, I like you build it up, you know. You get good primer actually puts an eighth inch of something on your wall. That will take care of the last of the All right, so again, guys, sanding your drywall is not rocket science. No. Simple stuff. Um, you know, he's, all, he's already got, in the, in the time we've run this camera here, five minutes, he's already got a 20-foot section of wall done. Um, all the uh, taper joints, all the butt joints, all the nail holes in about five minutes, all right? It, you shouldn't be sanding all day. No. All right, so just get it feeling good to the touch of your hand, all right? Run your hand over behind where you've sanded with your sponge and uh, feel. If it feels good, it's done. Let it go. No. Um, we've always uh, had a practice where we get it feeling good with our hand, make it feel as best we can with our hand and then we'll go ahead and prime our basement and after we put the primer on the primer will tell a story too if there's any spots that we missed we'll go back and we'll dot up our, our primed walls before we paint and uh, we'll fine-tune it with the primer on the walls too but uh, so that's the use, usage of a sanding block uh, we've also purchased our sanding pole which uh, Tom will show us here in a second you can use your sanding pole on your ceilings. You can also use your sanding pole on your long um, taper joints and also your butt joints as well. I mean, uh, some guys use a sanding pole for everything. Yeah, uh, sanding pole has a swivel head on it. 